You had to die for that one? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who is next? <clears throat> All right. Volume 15 of Creatives, Conventional or Otherwise. You walk with a purpose. You don't really have a purpose, aside from friendship, of course. But you know these streets pretty well by this point, so you can at least drop like you've got one. Erin Crojib. Wenshi Adyata. Or is that possibly Karen? Actually, you know what? You think you've had it up to here with friendship. You're sure you'll be back on your regular friend-making bullshit later, but today is just one of those days. A uh, curl up under the blankets with your favorite show sort of day. Uh, leave your phone on silent and say nothing to no one sort of day. And, honestly, you've watched a friend almost die of poisoning and gazed upon the juggalo afterlife. You think you've more than earned a day, or night rather, of respite like this. So, just for today, you turn your back on this new swath of Alternian city you were considering walking through and head back to ye old hideout. No explorations now, only bed. You drag yourself up the scaffolding to your hidey hole. More than anything, more than binging on media or relaxing amidst peace and quiet, you want to take a nice, long nap. So you spill yourself into the little pile of petting, bedding, pillows, and various pieces of clothing you manage to throw together and settle in. As soon as your body touches it, you're out like a light. But it isn't very long until you're awake again. And not because your body is rousing itself after sufficient slumber, but because of a persistent scrabbling sound. Persistent scrabbling sound that's followed by a loud thunk. Typically, that wouldn't be enough to get you up. You're a pretty heavy sleeper. But the noise is accompanied by the nagging sensation that whatever's making the noise is in the room with you, and that has you bolting upright. You must have woken up in the middle of your REM cycle because you feel like a mummy rising out of the crypt. Is this real life, or is this just fantasy? Your brain struggles to make sense of your surroundings through the fog of residual sleepiness that still settled over you as you stumble to your feet. Eventually, you're able to discern that the noise is coming from behind and above you, around where the ceiling is. What the hell, is there a raccoon crawling in the vents? Does Alternia even have raccoons? If it does, you're pretty sure you wouldn't want to meet one, but you can't exactly leave it in your living space either. You get up to investigate. The noise isn't coming from the ceiling like you thought, but from a platform that's been shoved unceremoniously to the very back of the watchtower. There's a large object in front of it that wasn't there before, a giant curved lens that could only have come from the hole that is now in the side of the platform structure. Maybe this was an old telescope or camera that the Condis once used for surveillance? The scrabbling continues, coming from within the structure. You're not eager for whatever it is in there to come jumping out at you as soon as you stick your head inside, but you steal your nerves and hoist yourself up. You find yourself face to face with not some weird animal or bug, but a troll. Hmm. Hmm. This is a bona fide friend opportunity. It's practically fallen in your lap, but you find yourself unexpectedly ornery about it. You would think that you could expect some privacy in your own home, or, well, the place you've adopted as home in Alternia anyway, but apparently not. Even when you've decided that you aren't in a friending mood, there the universe goes, yeeting new friends into your path anyways. Can't you go a day on this planet without dancing the whole friendship jig? It quickly becomes obvious that this mysterious stranger isn't going to offer you anything more than an enigmatic gazing into the middle distance. Uh, what exactly are they doing in your hideout, you ask? If they were thinking about moving in, they could have at least asked you first. You're the current occupant, after all. Don't want to move in. I already have a hive. I came up here for... that. They point past you. You can only assume they're referring to the giant lens you'd seen on the group floor. Well, if they'd gotten what they'd come for, why are they still hanging out in the platform's innards like this? Hmm. I'm stuck. And they didn't try calling for help? I didn't notice you. Wherever you came from, I didn't think anyone else was here. Would they perhaps like some help? Hmm. 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 
Maybe. As you hop down from the platform, you find your ire draining from you, much like flesh juice from a pimple. It's difficult to stay angry upon witnessing what's possibly the most pathetic burglary attempt ever, and it's counting your little fiasco with your ship. After walking around to the other side of the platform, you can see the troll's booted legs sticking out from a gap in the structure. It looks much too narrow for anyone to crawl through, yet that's exactly what they must have done in order to push the lens out from behind. You yell that you're going to try and pull them out. You hear a faint, muttered, okay, and reach up to grab them around the waist, pulling hard. It takes a couple of tries, but with one last particularly hard tug, you're finally able to pull them free. They tumble down on top of you. Thanks. For getting me unstuck. And breaking my fall. You didn't really do that part on purpose, but you're glad they appreciated it, you guess? They seem pretty content to continue lying on top of you, actually. But they're heavy, so you wriggle, wriggle out from underneath them like an earwig from under a rock and clamber to your feet. You nod at the lens. That's what they want, huh? The troll sits up, crossing their legs. You can see them more clearly now that they aren't sequestered inside the platform, although their face is obscured by a, a little by their shaggy hair and floppy, wide-brimmed hat. They look about as sleepy as you felt earlier. Sleepy as you're in danger of feeling again, in fact. Their voice is slow and regular, like a metronome dunked in molasses, and it almost threatens to send you right back to bed. Yeah. So. Mmm. 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 Can I have it? You swear you can feel your friend making juices start circulating through your body again with a vengeance after their little sabbatical. You're not really sure what came over you before. Turn down the chance to make a new friend? You? <laughs> wow, who kidnapped you and replaced you with a total stranger for a few hours there? You tell the troll of course they can have the lens. It's not like you're doing anything with it, or like it's even yours to begin with. It was just abandoned here, along with the rest of his broken down tech. Curiously, you ask what they want it for. Are they building something? Perhaps they're an engineer of some sort? No. I'm in all the way up here. Just for some building material? It would be pretty dumb. I want to use it for... Hmm. 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 Art. Huh. You look at the lens again skeptically. It's a cool lens, you suppose, but it mostly looks like exactly what it is. A hunk of junk. They want to make art out of this? Their work must be pretty, uh... <laughs> it's interesting, that's what it is. <laughs> mm. Mm. They squint at you like they've taken some sort of issue with your comment. Have you managed to offend them? You thought you were being polite enough, given the circumstances. Interesting. It's usually what people say when they have nothing better to say. Mm. Do you have a problem making art out of trash? You shake your head rapidly, but the troll is already crossing their arms and shooting you a disapproving look. I don't think I want to talk to you anymore. Oh no, does that mean they're going to leave? And after you up and decided to try to add them to your ever-growing friend harem, too. Oh. Tired. Oh. Okay, then. They're just gonna kind of glower at you from the floor for a while until they get their strength back enough to leave, you assume. This definitely isn't awkward at all. <laughs> Friendship faux pas. <sighs> <laughs> Alright. Let's try that again. Weird and weird is good. Uh huh. Yeah. The two of you alternate between looking at the lens and each other for a while. Uh. Usually over the course of making a new friend, they usually would have asked you to do something by now, or presented you with some sort of choice between two potential courses of action. 
Um, is there anything they'd like to do now that they've retrieved their art materials? Mm. <laughs> He's more of a two-dot guy. I put in five? That isn't what I ordered. Oh, sorry, that's six of them. Wow. Guess it's all on you, then. They probably want to take the lens back to their hive, right? I would, but I'm tired. Hungry? Forging for garbage takes a lot of energy. I used the last of it climbing up here. I don't think I'll be able to carry it by myself. They really didn't think this whole junk heist thing through, did they? Very well, did they? But would you look at that? This is an excellent time to make a suggestion. I can help carry it. Sure. You do that. Make sure you're careful with it. Of course, of course. You'll treat it with all the delicacy of an egg in an egg spoon race. I don't know what that is. It means a cluck beast over. <laughs> over. Carrying it to the watchtower's interest is easy enough. Maneuvering down the cliff face is more complicated. You manage by holding it between you as you navigate from foothold to foothold. When you reach the bottom, the troll looks like they're ready to sit down again, right there in the brush, but you urge them on. Resting in their hive will probably be much more comfortable. That's the wrong way. Sheepishly, you whirl back around from the random direction you are about to stride towards and follow them instead. With them leading the way and you bringing up the rear, the two of you shamble along the path with all the easy grace of two people in a horse costume, but you make it to your new companion's hive much quicker than you would have expected. They come to a stop in front of the entrance to a cave and another cliffside. If this is their place, it isn't very far from yours at all. You're surprised that you haven't run into them until now. They're practically a neighbor. I've seen you around before. You're pretty hard to miss. Really? They should have said hi and introduced themselves. The two of you could have been hanging out all this time. Hmm. Didn't feel like it. Lads, I was busy. With more of this scavenging and art business, you guess. Oh well, you're getting to know each other now, which is what's important. Speaking of, you've been talking and walking along, and you haven't even exchanged names yet. How remiss of you. Usually you would have gotten introductions out of the way from the moment they broke into your hideout, but it's been an odd sort of night. That's okay. I'm Karen. Now come on, let's go inside. They pull you and the lens forward. They uh, didn't ask your name in return, but you manage to bumblingly introduce yourself as you lurch along into their hive. At home on Earth, you had a thing about garages. You thought it was interesting to scope the sort of stuff people ended up accumulating. You've seen some real gems in your day. A collection of singing and dancing novelty planned figurines, and a small army of Furbies without any fur. The beat-up remains of some kind of cat mascot costume. The inside of Karen's hive is as if every single weird garage you've ever seen converged to exist simultaneously in the same cave. The platonic ideal of garages. It's hard to believe that someone lives here. If you look closer, though, you begin to notice homey comforts tucked among the metal junkyard scraps and broken furniture piled over the floors and all the way up along the craggy cave walls. A recouper raccoon sits on the ledge on one wall, and you think that's a kitchen cabinet wedged into another? So, what do you think? It's pretty cozy, you say, giving them a double thumbs up. The stalactites are a nice touch. Hmm. I meant about my art. Oh, the art, of course. You cast around desperately. Darren's hive is such a jumble of miscellany that it's impossible for you to figure out which of it is art materials which are finished artworks, and which are Karen's actual belongings. That's a pretty gnarly skull over there with leaves and the eye sockets. The angle at which that umbrella sticks out of that lawn chair is really uh, compelling. You settle on a purple object in one corner that looks more like a traditional sculpture than a bunch of household items struck, stuck together. Those curves, that amaranthine hue, truly an inspiring piece. Karen looks at you strangely. That's just the load gaper. You don't know much about art, do you? Busted. No, no, you really don't. Remley had taught you the importance of giving the people what they want, and Demisia had taught you the importance of putting a tarp down before lopping off a head on head so blood uh, paint doesn't get all the floor. But you hadn't learned very much about actually creating art from them. 
As you gaze around the cave again, you find that you really want to understand. Clearly this is something that's important to Daron, otherwise why would they spend the majority of their time on it? You too wish to experience the marvels of the creative process. If only there were a way for you to learn. Hmm. If you want to that badly, could make something out of what I collected. Really? But they must have worked so hard to find all this. Is it really fine for you to just dick around with it? You're surprised to see that Jaron looks pleased at what you're saying. It's maybe the most imp expressive you've seen them since you've met. How Lord is, he's dicking around. <laughs> looks like you're already starting to get it. You smile proudly. Anyway, if you make something sucky, they shrug their shoulders. And just take it apart again, or use its separate components. To make something else. Your smile flags a little. Hmm. Where do you want to start? You rub your chin thoughtfully, wandering over to the lawn chair with the umbrella in it. A pile of fabric is stacked on top. You rifle through it until you find some colors you like. Then you walk across to the other side of Garen's hive, searching for other items you might be able to use. Aaron doesn't offer much in terms of guidance, aside from cautioning you away from a couple of objects that are actually finished artworks. Oops. You end up with an armful of knickknacks that you put down in front of what is now a lamppost, but will soon be your canvas of choice. Then you get to work. The fabric you twirl all around the post. You tie the smaller objects, a snow globe, an old boot, a fancy Santa, onto it with string. On top, you perch a rubber Walmart goose that makes a majestically horrible noise when pressed. As your art piece comes together under your hands, you take a few steps away every now and then uh, to praise it from further back, making adjustments whenever you find something you're not happy with. Finally, it's complete. You turn to ask Jared's opinion, newly flushed with pride and adrenaline from having successfully made a thing. They don't look very impressed. Your face falls. What's wrong? Did you use too much orange? With its scattered loose's teeth a little too out there? Listen. You're overthinking this. You just do what feels right. You frown. Don't think at all, then? Let your instincts drive you? Thinking a little is probably good, too. Okay, don't overthink it, but don't abandon rational thought altogether. Let your feelings guide you, but not completely. Um, pretty vague, but sure. You'll give it another shot. You strip the lamppost back down. This time, you don't spend too long regarding it in all its nude metal glory. You begin working immediately, whipping around Garen's hive in a flurry of cave dust and determination, grabbing things as soon as you lay eyes on them. Garen looks more and more fascinated the longer you're at it. Not long until their eyes are positively gleaming. Soon they're taking step after tentative step towards you, as if drawn to you by the sheer force of your artistic energies. It looked like they might want to join in, actually. Is, is that okay? I see what you're going for, I, I think. Your vibe has got me all inspired. Of course, the more the merrier. You'd love to see what the two of you could create together. With a barely there smile, Darren paints a traffic cone at the base of the lamppost with great aplomb, and you're off. It's all a blur after that. The two of you move in unison, like you're co-piloting a Jaeger, except instead of a giant robot, you're steering a feverish creativity creativity propelled fugue state wow I think we're almost done you stand back from your newly forged pile of bric-a-brac mopping the sweat from your brow they're right you're almost finished almost you need to add a finishing touch the piece de resistance and you know just the thing with great conviction you pick up a box from the floor tearing it open so that its contents fall all over your sculpture Oh no, my polysaccharifers slats. You freeze. Were those cooking ingredients? You seem to have gotten carried away. You start apologizing, but Karen is already waving your words away. It's fine. It looks better like this. Too good to waste his food. Anyway, I can find other things to eat. You both regard your creation, heaving for breath. You're done. As exhausted as you are, a wonderful calm settles over you as you admire the result of your hard work. It's... Mm, mm, beautiful. It really, really is. 
You don't know how, because you don't think you'd actually done anything different compared to your first try. Maybe you just got lucky. But regardless of exactly how it came about, this is one of the most bizarrely sublime things you think you've ever laid eyes on in your life. And the longer you stare at it, the more layers and depth reveal themselves to you, like the petals of a newly bloomed flower opening to the sunlight of spring. Abruptly, irresistibly, you feel yourself gripped in the throes of profound new knowledge. Theron's artworks are pointless and weird, but perhaps that's what gives them their charm. In such an uncertain and violent world, where troll calls troll, and where you might be trapped in an endless Sisyphean journey across the planet in search of new friends, for a brief moment you can have this. You can stand here, awash and appreciative what the fuck at this masterpiece you've crafted out of a bunch of other people's trash, marveling at how you've birthed something greater than yourself. Sometimes, trash can be beautiful. You think you understand now. This is what Yaren must have been endeavoring to teach you. You beam at them, glowing with the joy of your discovery. Uh, yeah, sure. You say so. <laughs> joy ride! Alright. I think we had one other option to try there. <laughs> well. Assuming there was no semantic difference between the number of dots we use. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, doesn't care. All right, why not look for more easily portable trash? Sure, this giant lens is pretty neat, but there's probably plenty of other cool stuff they could use that wouldn't be such a pain to move. Your new friend considers this, scratching their cheek. There is one place that I go to a lot for material. You nod. Maybe the two of you could go there, then. You could help. You'll even graciously hold onto the lens for them, so they can come get it another, some other time. Okay. I would have come back for it. Even if you hadn't said anything, though. They take you to a garbage dump. Or a river, to be completely accurate, which has plenty of garbage washed up on its shore. Something about the strength and direction of the river's currents here seem to pull in the waste that's been dumped into it, concentrating the debris on this muddy batch of land. You're not sure what you expected, really. You had fleeting thoughts of a gleaming art supply store, but they did intimate that they work primarily with garbage. Here we are. You better not tell anyone about this place. It's a real treasure trove. They nail you with another intense stare. No, you say, of course not. Their trash haven is safe with you. Satisfying, they pull up the bandana sitting around their neck to cover their nose and mouth. Looks like they're ready to get to work. One of them band animals. <laughs> You're not sure what you should be looking for, though. More discarded computer equipment? Are they in more of a toilet paper roll and yogurt cup kind of mood? Never catches your eye. If you see anything, just shout. Now that they mention it, you never got their name. I'm Karen. If you have chitter, you could follow me. Yeah. They hold out their hand for your palm husk. You hand it to them, and they fiddle with it for a second before returning it to you and traipsing off. A little clicking around reveals that they're now in your chitter following list, but also that they've taken the liberty of downloading a new app. An app with a purple-pink camera icon, and uh, okay, you recognize this one as well, except on Alternia it's apparently called Pincerspan. Pincer <laughs> Searching their chitter handle leads you to their account on here, too. At least, you think it's their account. It's hard to tell from the profile picture, which is a blurry shot of one of their horns and the brim of their hat. Most of what you can see is sky. Maybe skimming their account will give you a better idea of their aesthetic. You scroll through photographs that are similarly enigmatic. An intense close-up of a sewer drain lid, the curve of a piece of ceramic, a purbeast sniffing the camera. They've got quite the number of followers, despite the fact that nobody seems to know who they are, and that they never reply to comments. You've got a friend in common, too. User Sirava Streams for Sweeps has liked a slew of their most recent posts. Hmm. 
None of this is very helpful. You also realize that you're standing here stalking your new friend on your phone like a creep when you could just, you know, go talk to them some more. So you hurry off after them. By the time you catch up, they're squinting at something. What's that over there? You follow their gaze. It's a hideout of some kind. A small cave tucked into the rock. The two of you approach it curiously. Aaron stops to peer at something on the ground near its entrance, but you decide to venture further in. You think you might hear voices, and their sources become apparent once you've taken a few steps inside. Who goes there? Reveal yourself! Oh, it's just you. Back for round two. The likelihood of this battle's outcome being anything other than me kicking your ass is exactly zero. Typically, this would be a massive waste of my time. But luckily for you, I have nothing better to do. As Daya surges forward, presumably to attack you, but any air of intimidation his little speech might have had is quickly diffused by Konyo grabbing him firmly by the back of his coat and yanking him back. Daya, don't be rude. As Daya shrugs Konyo's hand away, the quiet sizzle of his psionics is like the hiss of a pissed off cat. This, my dear Konyo, is merely smack talk. As a prince among my caste, rudeness is simply not a part of my repertoire. Cornel just snorts. Then stop being a strife-hungry dick. Friend is delicate, okay? You protest that you aren't at all as delicate as the last time you'd run into each other. You've seen some shit. As Daya's sparkly sigh nonsense doesn't scare you now. The two of them are too focused on each other to pay attention to you. You telling me not to fight for once is pretty rich. Don't you think I feel the same as you? It's been too long since I've had someone to punch. Whose bright idea was it in the first place? Hole up here in a trash dump for days. Told you over and over again that we're here because our quarry is somewhere close. We just had to figure out exactly where. It's a perfectly rational plan. You'd see that if you just think for a second. Yikes. You thought that maybe you could have a nice three-way friend reunion, but they're too busy squabbling. Meanwhile, where had Taran gotten off to? You slink away from the escalating sniping, looking around for them. You're not entirely surprised when you find them hunched over some object on the ground, poking at it. You know these two, you say, in a stage whisper, pointing in Konyal and Azdaya's direction. You could introduce them once there's not quite so much yelling going on. Taran pulls down their bandana to answer. Hmm, well thanks. I found something more interesting over here. They gesture at the object. This is a great find. I've never seen anything like it. I could make something amazing out of this. You take a proper look at the object. It appears to be a miniature satellite dish with a few pipe cleaners sticking out of it. Unlike all of this other stuff out here, though, this object is moving. The dish is rotating while a few lights glimmer softly at its base. You're pretty sure this isn't trash. And weren't Konyal and Azdaya just discussing tracking someone? Whatever this is, probably belongs to them. Yeah, that's why you've got to distract them. So I can nab it. Okay, this is no longer scavenging. This is straight up thievery. You glance at Konyal and Azdaya again. They're so preoccupied with arguing with each other that they haven't even looked your way. But once they realize the tracker is missing, they'll probably decide to go after Kiaran to get it back. That happens. Foul them. I can get away in time. This doesn't sit right with you. You don't want to screw your other two friends over. And the energy between them is so weird right now. The verbal sparring looks about a hair's breadth away from turning into physical sparring, but they also kind of look like they want to make out. Whatever's going on, you don't want to be caught in the middle of it. That, however, sounds exactly like what Jaren wants you to do. I'll make it up to you. Someday. <laughs> Before you can make a decision, Jaron tucks the piece of tech under their arm. They take a running leap towards a fence that sections off this gross trash shore from the woods, vaulting over it in an impressive display of athletic prowess. You cringe. Jaron is really leaving you in the lurch here. This is so not the kind of thing a good friend would do. But then maybe you were never really friends in the first place. Only I knew how to auspice this between them. <laughs>